Today we are talking about all the major players in VR, the moves they're making, why they're making them, and the future of VR. This video is going to be an objective overview of the history and current state of the VR industry. And this comes right on the heels of many conversations surrounding exclusivity and OpenXR. While I do have strong personal opinions, which I will share, I do believe every single player has brought major contributions and has a justifiable position of their current strategy. First up is going to be Facebook. Now the clear juggernaut with over $60 billion in annual revenue, Facebook purchased Oculus back in March of 2014 and has clearly shown they are committed to growing the VR industry. Facebook has made major strides to make VR much more mainstream. They've lowered the VR entry point to $400 with both the Oculus Quest and the Rift S. This cost cutting was further assisted by the removal of external tracking systems and the development of a well-performing inside-out camera-based system. Facebook is also the largest producer of VR exclusive titles and has recently announced partnerships with major AAA developers where they will help fund new games. Facebook's contribution to VR is undeniable. They are leveraging their vast wealth and programming experience to the best of their ability. Facebook is heavily invested in the success of VR. Their business model has them expanding the industry by selling hardware at or potentially below cost, and they will be relying solely on software sales to be profitable. The Oculus Store is currently the only VR storefront which limits support based on the user's preferred headset. Currently on PC, the only supported devices are the Rift and Rift S. Owners of other headsets would need to rely on the inconsistent support of a third-party application known as Revive in order to play Oculus exclusive titles. Putting aside all other issues with the Facebook company, such as privacy concerns and Cambridge Analytica scandals, and focusing solely on their VR influence, the exclusivity deals are where I begin to take umbrage. While selling Oculus exclusive titles to all VR headsets from the Oculus store makes sense in the short run as it nearly doubles their consumer base, it does not align with their long-term goals. Facebook wants as many people as possible using their hardware to increase the likelihood that you will make the Oculus storefront your only storefront. Now, my personal fears with Facebook as a major contributor in the VR industry align with the same fears that I have with any other major publisher currently in the gaming industry. As it's clear with publishers like EA and Activision, gone are the days of focusing on producing a great product, but rather only a profitable one. The focus is now solely on stock price and annual growth. This has led to an array of predatory practices, loot boxes, absurd DLC prices, and pay to win products. Games are often released in broken states with the emphasis on monetization and no concern for the player experience. With Facebook pulling the strings, another stock price chasing, growth hungry company, how long is it before VR game development follows the traditional industry? Also, Facebook's prevention of allowing other HMDs to work with the Oculus Store is akin to Epic Store's purchasing of exclusivity rights. While definitely not a direct comparison, and you can also defend Facebook by claiming, well, if Facebook was not funding some of these games, they would never get produced anyway. The company is still more or less removing player choice. The PC gaming industry was built upon player choice, allowing players to do whatever they wanted with whatever hardware they had or preferred. PC gaming was the world where people decided to play Dark Souls with a Guitar Hero controller, and mod Skyrim to absurdity. And while the Rift X is an excellent piece of entry-level hardware, some users may prefer something better or different, and I hate to see the PC market fragmented like this. Next on our list is Valve. While definitely not as big as Facebook, this is still a multi-billion dollar company we are dealing with. This once major game developing company, now king of all digital sales, 
have been true believers in VR for quite some time. An argument can be made that Valve is responsible for the initial success of Oculus. In the early days, when Oculus was a Kickstarter campaign, Valve supplied their technical expertise in order to help this project. Extensive testing was performed to make sure issues like motion sickness were not a problem, and the ideal hardware specifications were determined. When it was announced that Oculus was purchased by Facebook, Valve quickly partnered with HTC to bring the first 360 room scale device to market. Until 2019, Valve's public contributions to VR were mainly in updates to the Steam VR platform. While during this time period, they have promised three full length AAA style games and have worked with other development studios such as Stress Level Zero on their upcoming titles, overall major contributions to the VR industry have seemed sparse. In June of 2019, the Valve Index was released, a product produced and distributed directly from Valve. Valve's decision to release this product was based on their stance that they did not believe VR was good enough yet. Their major goals being increase the quality of VR, focus on producing blockbuster style games, proving the potential of the VR medium, and then eventually get around to focusing on reducing the cost of these devices. One of Valve's three titles is promised before the end of 2019, and for once, let's hope Valve time is accurate. Valve is still operating at the enthusiast level for VR, with a reduced focus on making this a mainstream product. Their current focus is on pioneering new technology, and they're not afraid to take some risks. Now, while they may be very passionate about VR gaming, unlike Facebook, they have a much smaller stake in the overall success of the VR industry. Valve slides into a category of wanting VR to succeed, but not needing it to. Now, we can only hope that these games are more passion-driven rather than profit, and it leads to the development of some top-tier VR titles, the likes of which we have never seen before. And our final player in the VR industry is HTC. As far as annual revenue, HTC actually slides in between Facebook and Valve, still making it a huge company. Their foray into VR started with their partnership with Valve in 2015. The Vive was initially marred with a higher price tag, poor technical support from HTC, and terribly buggy software known as Viveport. The Vive was not a highly profitable device, and since 2016, HTC has been in a revenue decline. HTC had a subscription-based video game platform which ultimately underwhelmed gamers, and HTC began to shift focus from the general consumer to the enterprise level. Now, this was clearly seen with the release of the Vive Pro, the Pro in the title directly referencing that this product was intended for professionals. At $800 for the headset alone, this obviously was not directed at the general consumer or gamer. HTC has continued this trend with the recent release of the Vive i Pro, a $1,600 product. But in April of 2019, they attempted to upgrade their subscription-based service, putting it more in line with a product like Netflix. And while the product was greatly improved, gamers remained wary. The older Viveport software has already left a bad taste in the mouth of many Vive owners. Currently, HTC is on the verge of releasing their newest headset, the Vive Cosmos. One that on paper appears to bring to the table benefits that no other VR headset has. With a wireless PC VR adapter and the potential to make this device portable by attaching a phone, this device may be a winner. HTC, however, has to compete with Facebook selling hardware at near cost and Valve showing the world what a true premium product is. Marketing for the Vive Cosmos has already taken some extremely questionable turns and HTC's future in the VR industry may depend on the success of this product. Okay everyone, I hope you enjoyed this brief overview and insight into the future of the VR industry. If you liked it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, maybe leave some comments, I wanna hear your feedback. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and ding that bell. Okay, I will see you guys next time.